whoever will overcome what I'm going to share will have overcome all, all things. Amen. I strongly believe, as the word of God says, that um, in the world there are many troubles, but be of good cheer that overcome. After sharing, after the sharing of today, I strongly believe that viewers and children of God over there, you're going to overcome. And our topic today is on the spiritual weight of sexual sin. The spiritual weight of sexual sin. As I was coming into the studio, uh, as I was coming into the studio today, I uh, just received a WhatsApp message of one of uh, of uh, some child of God somewhere, and she was telling me she's married in a holy matrimony uh, after around eight or nine years. And she has been telling me, Pastor, I feel like coming out of this marriage. As I speak now, I just got my husband in life, life, life with another woman. You see, these people are where we are, we had a holy wedded marriage. And uh, the truth is, if we do not talk about how to overcome sexual sin, many believers will, have, will love the Lord, but they will be struggling in how they can live a holy life. Uh, two weeks ago again, before I open up to what our sister is going to share today, and then I will be sharing alongside, is uh, two weeks ago, as I was um, coming from church, after the church service, I met a young girl about 20 years of age, and she was crying. And uh, when, I was, when I met her on, on the road as I was moving uh, home, she was crying. She said, Pastor, I want to kill myself. I feel I'm tired of this world. I feel the world is useless, and I feel I, feel I am useless. And I told her, why, why, why can you say such a word? God loves you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. And then she finally told me, as I speak right now, you see me, I'm just, I just want to take this poison. She had a packet. She said, I just want to take this poison and I die. And then uh, I said, but why? Why should you die when Jesus loves you? She said, as I speak, there's a, there's a young man who promised me marriage. And then he rushed, he ran away after impregnating me. And then he gave me appeals to abort at the same time. I feel I don't want to abort, but I feel now I hate myself. And I feel it is too much on my side. So I took her through a time of counseling. And then thereafter, we prayed together. And then she was able later to give me the packet of poison. I threw it in the latrine, and she was delivered and was set free. And I taught her how one can overcome sexual sin and how the Lord can help you get a better husband from God's will. Allow me today to share our topic, uh, which is called the spiritual weight of sexual sin. But before we go deeper into that topic tonight, uh, we want to hear a testimony. As I told you, my name is Stephen Shalom Selvija from King of Kings Church at Kajau, based in the Sindhu District. And we are here in Western Uganda. And um, as, I, as, as I said, I want to, 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 to first introduce somebody here whom I have today. And then uh, she, will, she will tell us details of how the Lord helped her to overcome sexual sin. And I will share deeply on how you, yourself, you can overcome. But before you overcome, it is important to understand the spiritual weight of sexual sin. And then you will know why. You need to overcome it. Thank you so much. Yes, um, and, uh, sister in the Lord, Mama Rachel, you're most welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, viewers, we have Mama Rachel. She's our church member, and she's going to tell us a testimony of how she was able to overcome a uh, sexual sin. Mama Rachel, yes. how has God kept you? Yeah, God has kept me fine. Amen. You bless the Lord. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Mm. Um, did you, uh, in your lifetime, from the time you have been a girl, I can see you don't have a ring, you're not yet married, mm -hmm. but I know the Lord is doing good things. Mm -hmm. Tell us where the Lord has brought you from in just a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. Praise God, viewers, called Rachel, and uh, Pastor Sharon is my pastor. Uh, God has brought me from afar. I grew from a born again family. I happened to come from 
My mother is a pastor, she serves God. I grew knowing God, I grew God fearing, and within me I promised myself that I will never have sex before marriage. I'll have sex in the holy matrimony on my honeymoon. But I did know that things can fail to work out. Of course, I was into single sex schools, I was serving God, we used to go for missions and outreaches until I joined campus first year when my dad passed. Then I began to see how life changed. Uh, that's when I began to enter having a boyfriend. Uh, I had a fellowship. I was in, I was fellowshipping with the CEO of Chambogo, but because I was, I didn't, I was not considered in the fellowship, so the devil took me off, he stole me, as the Bible tells us that he came to steal, kill and destroy. I had known Christ, but because I was not, dead, I was not fellowshipping with my colleagues constantly, uh, the devil kept me into isolation, then he rose my worries, and I have, my, I need money for hair, money for hostel, coursework, and so on. But my fellowship was so supportive, but there is a way the devil closed my eyes from them that I could not know that they can stand with me in every situation until I happened to get a boyfriend. So when I got a boyfriend, uh, in, uh, I think I was in third year, that's when I, I, I lost my virginity. Of course, when I lost my virginity, uh, now that's when I became more guilty to be in the presence of God. That took me away from the presence of God. I stopped fellowshipping. I took fellowship for granted, my pastors for granted. And the devil kept on connecting me to other men. Like, I, I could enter different relationships. This relationship fails, another relationship comes in, like that. Of course, in the names of someone coming to promise you marriage, and then maybe after sleeping with you, the relationship breaks. But the devil is a liar that in the same minute, another man could be waiting. So of course I ended up having, like going into different relationships. And of course, you cannot get women as someone sleeping with you. These are people of the world. You want money from them, support from them. But I realized that uh, the moment you could have sexual intercourse with that person, then again that person leaves you. So I kept in, in that life like that. Of course, that's when I backslid. I knew I was not worthy to go back and serve God. Uh, later, sin overpowered me that I felt like I don't want to know, I don't want to know. And I was like, okay, even born again, do that. So so that's how I kept on living in that life. And the devil ensnared me. I later became a slave to, to sex, a slave to the sexual immorality. So with time, uh, of course, these men weren't providing like so much. If someone gives you money for hair, like 50,000, then after, of course, after sleeping, actually, I was not even lucky. No man even could give me like even 500,000. A man gives you 20, 30, 50. I mean, the devil had put that thing on me. So that is how I kept on living. That when I cannot even show anything, but maybe I had an investment through the men I, I was having sex with, or the men I was dating. Maybe I can show land, or maybe no, 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 no. They could give me peanut money, but there was a lie at the extent that uh, he ended up connecting me to Facebook men. Um, of course, he made sure that I'm into that luck, 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 luck. And one thing I know is my pastor always tells us that. Sex is a direct transfer of demons, that when you have it, someone will give you what he has, and you also take what, she also takes what you have. So, I later began to face a life of rejection, a life of not being lucky, you know, a life of living that struggling life, like, uh, no, things, I don't know, but I got that funny garment. So, I will never forget, there's a time, of course, when, when you do, don't draw close to God, of course, God, but the Bible tells us that when you draw close to him, draw close to you. But me, sin took me away from God. Remember, I'm a, I'm a daughter to a pastor. Of course, my mother could not, do, would not know what I was going through. So the devil is a liar that he ended up connecting me to a Facebook man. That man, I will never forget him. But I was in luck. The landlord has had chased me from the house. So when the landlord had chased me from the house, he had thrown my things outside. So this man could 